And we're back. We're going to do some uh, ENM with oscillating currents due to an LC circuit. Uh, this is the circuit where we, we combine a charge capacitor and an inductor together. Uh, a circuit that would look something like this, perhaps, where we could connect the switch to the battery, and that would charge up the capacitor, where positives would, would flow to the top plate and electrons would flow to that bottom plate. You know, the idea behind this is, um, as we'll see in a second with the math, we produce an oscillating current or an AC current. This is important in a very practical sense because in, in classical in a way we can think about making something like a light wave, okay, any kind of electromagnetic radiation, uh, we can do that by shaking charges, making them oscillate. Uh, you can imagine, you know, if you're holding on to a spring or a slinky that's stretched out in a straight line, if your hand is the electron at rest, okay, you'd have electric field lines shooting out of you in all directions, straight lines. We, we could picture it. Now, if you shake your hand or shake that electron, it's kind of like when you're holding on to that slinky or a rope. It, it causes a disturbance along that in the form of a wave. So by shaking electrons, you can make waves on, or, you know, within your electric field. But what's interesting about that is, is now you have a moving charge, and you also have a magnetic field that turns on. Okay, it's induced. And you're shaking that too. So all of a sudden you have an electromagnetic wave. Okay, so we're going to imagine charging a capacitor, and then flipping the switch from point A over to point B, where you connect that charged capacitor to an inductor. Okay, at that point, the capacitor wants to discharge. And the inductor, once you get some current going through that thing, uh, it creates flux. And even though, even when the capacitor is fully discharged, the inductor then wants to keep that current flowing because it wants to keep a change in flux or a decrease in flux from happening. So it keeps pumping the current until, if we imagine a positive current, that current keeps flowing and positive charges keep flowing until they get stuck on the bottom plate. Electrons in reality are flowing the other way and get stuck on the top plate. But at that point the inductor has used up all of its energy. Oops. And uh, can't keep that current flowing. And so there's nothing left to hold the charge on the capacitor. And then the current starts flowing back the other way. And that keeps repeating itself. Okay, let's just go straight to the math and see, see how to think about this. Um, Kirchhoff's rule for voltage uh, tells us that the voltage of your battery is equal to the sum of the voltages of all your pieces, all the components. Well, for the LC circuit, um, we've disconnected the battery. So we have a zero there. We have a charge capacitor. So that voltage is Q over C. We have an inductor. Now, inductors, we have that weird expression, the inductance times the rate of change of current, DIGT. Well, our goal is we want to find the charge as a function of time. Um, what we can do is we can take that I, think about the definition of current, it's the QDT. So if we substitute that in for current, we have a capacitor, and then we're taking a, a time derivative of derivative. So in other words, we have a second derivative of charge with respect to time. So this is our differential equation. It's a second order differential equation. And what I'll do is, is rearrange it. Let me isolate that second derivative. So that would mean uh, we'd have a, a negative Q over C. And I'll also divide through by that um, inductance. 
Okay, so that's our differential equation. Now compare that to a spring that's oscillating back and forth with a mass, and there we have a spring constant. Okay, in mechanics we know if you do F equals MA in a spring, negative KX is the spring force. We're assuming no friction or anything. And uh, what we did is acceleration we can rewrite as the second derivative of position with respect to time. So we, we have the same equation now for this circuit as we did for springs or simple harmonic motion in mechanics. Mathematically, these are identical. Now, in general, the constant that we have, okay, in front of that variable on the right-hand side, is omega squared. We also know that um, the solution to this for an oscillation is either a sine or a cosine. So in mechanics, we'd say that your position as a function of time is your maximum or, dis or amplitude times either a sine or a cosine of a constant times time. And that constant, omega, is given by the constants in our equation. So if we look at our circuit here, we know we're going to have sines or cosines as the solution for charge. So we would have whatever your maximum charge is, or your initial charge, times sine or cosine, might as well just throw a sine in there, of a constant times time. Well, that 1 over LC is going to help us figure out what omega is. Okay, because 1 over LC is omega squared. Okay, so omega is, of course, the square root of whatever that number is. And omega, this angular frequency, is related to how many hertz our current is oscillating at. Okay, how many times a second those charges are bouncing back and forth from the plates of the capacitor. And that's related to period. So it's just like harmonic motion. Um, okay, and we're that's as far as I'm going to take it. Um, or actually, I, I should say, we, we could actually find a charge if we wanted to by taking the derivative. So that's going to be our, our maximum charge uh, times omega, and so that's actually going to be a cosine. And might as well, for completeness, we could figure out the derivative one more time if we wanted to find the voltage of your inductor. We need the IDT. So that's going to be Q max times omega squared. Okay, times negative um, sine omega t. Okay, so if we multiply that by inductance, that would be uh, the voltage, <laughs> the induced voltage of your inductor. Okay, so uh, it's, it's weird, but yeah, we can actually control how quickly these charges bounce back and forth and oscillate in the circuit. Uh, that's important, and so our frequency is going to be proportional to the square root of 1 over LC. Um, that means we, we could actually generate electromagnetic waves with the circuit, because we'd be shaking electrons. <laughs> um, we can control that with LC. Or think of your, your radio. Um, a radio has an antenna. The antenna is a metal conductor, has free electrons in it, and so if an electromagnetic wave were to get absorbed by an electron, that electron is going to oscillate up and down, or back and forth. That's an AC signal. That's a signal that can be um, directed into another LC circuit. And how do you pick up the frequency that you want? Well, you turn your tuning dial, and that maybe is is changing the inductance or capacitance of your circuit until you tune it into the frequency that you want. Okay. Obviously, the electronics will be quite a bit more complicated than this to filter out all the other signals and 
and control the quality and turn it back into sound and this and that. But the gist of the, the gist of this is we can do this with inductors and capacitors together. Okay, so this is an LC circuit. Again, it's a, a second order differential equation, it's harmonic motion. And that's why we, we already know the solution to this in the form of either sine or cosines. I hope this helps. I hope this helps um, you, you comprehend what this kind of circuit can do and why it's important. Uh, if we need this for all wireless objects nowadays. So um, until next time, we'll see you later.